Now to CPS. It's official. E-learning for the start of school and well into the fall. Tonight, our Jermont Terry is live at CPS headquarters where some families are questioning if every child will get a fair education. Jermont. Brad, despite classes being done online, it will be mandatory for all CPS students to log on. And unlike what happened in the spring, what they do during this e-learning process will affect their grades moving forward. And some community groups are stepping up to make sure that there's an even learning field. At 75th and Stewart, Tamar Manessa and this crew are finalizing the transformation of this empty lot and some old containers. We turned these shipping containers into classrooms. Mothers and Men Against Senseless Killings, or MASK, offers free support through the Study Buddy program. Low-income students and families can get assistance during what's now mandated e-learning for all of CPS. What does e-learning mean to kids who don't have internet access? What does e-learning mean to children who don't have the devices to keep up with their work because they don't have computers? Up to 10 kids can gather in one pod for a limited amount of time of learning. Manasa tells me the waiting list is filling up. She believes low-income families will be most affected in this e-learning process. And more often than not, they get left out. They, those kids get left behind. Yet she's ready to deal with an influx of kids once parents are forced to take on the task. Everyone doesn't have the luxury of staying home. People still have to work. The city is putting up free Wi-Fi for families that needed 100,000 students can utilize it. CPS says it will also have hardware for home use for those in need. Parents should expect um, a full day of instruction and engagement for their students. Teachers should expect to be at work for the full time that they would be working if they were in a school setting. But Manassa points out it's more than just tablets and homes. There are a lot of adult literacy challenges. She believes the learning gap will only get wider because in many cases, some low-income parents dropped out of school themselves. The children of parents like that shouldn't suffer because the parents can't keep up. That's what community is for. And remote learning kicks off on September 8th, and just about everyone will be watching closely to see how this process goes. Reporting live outside of CPS headquarters tonight, Jermont Terry, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Jermont. Chicago Public Schools will reevaluate and could switch to a hybrid plan with in person and remote learning in November. School leaders say the decision was based on science and surveys, finding that parents didn't feel comfortable sending their kids to school.